me howdy. This is Mr. Potter. In, in this last video, we're going to talk about dealing with these fractions. We have these fractions that, that uh, tend to be rather awkward to work with, especially if we're doing the multiplication or the division where multiplying fractions were actually multiplying the numerators and multiplying the denominators, we get very large numbers. And the thing is, clearly this fraction that I've got here can be reduced. I mean, both the numerator and denominator are multiple of 10. The question is, is, how do we automatically reduce them? And that's really the focus of today's video. So the first thing we're going to do is we're, we're going to create a private helper function. So the whole, whole idea is that I want to talk, talk about how to reduce fractions. And of course, what I have to do is I want to find the common denominator. In other words, I want to find, excuse me, I want to find the greatest common factor. Then I want to divide the numerator and denominator. By that common factor. So now, now that I have this, this, this scheme out, the question is, how do I find this greatest common factor? And that's the focus behind this private helper function. Now, we are going to make it private, which means I only want my fractions to be able to handle this. I don't, I don't want to have, have other methods call on this. The main method isn't going to call on this GCD fact function. What it's going to do instead is it's going to call on the reduce function and ask the, the fraction to reduce itself. Now, I'm trying to find a GCD based on two numbers. Now, I have no, no idea what those two numbers are. Later on, it'll be the, the numerator and denominator, but I just want to talk about, about in the generic sense of A and B. And I sh should get an int out of this because the greatest common factor between two numbers should be another number. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to find out which one is the biggest and which one is the smallest. So I'm going to call int big and this is going to be equal to math.max a b. The, the math class has a, a max function, which, which will tell you the largest of two integers. And it also has a min function, which will tell you the smallest. So math.min a comma b I'm going to store in a variable called small. Now the only thing that's going to be a little bit new and basically just copy this next line of code as it is um, is this statement. So I'm going to have while parentheses 
sees. Big mod small exclamation point equals zero. And I'll explain what this is in just a moment. We have talked a little bit about loops, but all of the loops we've talked about so far have been for a fixed duration. In other words, I want to run a loop five times, or I want to run a loop six times. I want I to count up from zero to five, or I want I to count down from six to zero. But occasionally we'll have situations where we want variable length loops, and that's the purpose of this. This. So I want this loop to continue as long as the remainder, when I take big and divide by small, as long as that remainder is not, not zero, I want to keep doing this. And what, what I'm going to be doing is something called the Chinese remainder theorem. And the whole the whole idea behind this is if I have two numbers, let's say 96 and 36, and I want to find the common denominator for these two numbers, or the common factor, what I can do is I can subtract these numbers. So if I take 96 minus 36, that's going to give me 60, which means now I'm no longer ha having to worry about 96 and 36, but I'm looking at 60 and 36. And so I'm going to do the, the same calculation, take, take the biggest one minus the smallest one, and that, that's going to give me 24. Then out of these last two numbers, I'm going to take the biggest one minus the smallest one. And that's going to give me 12. Now, at this point, I'm looking at these numbers. And 36, 24, and 12, they're all obviously multiples of 12. And if I were to look at 24 mod 12, that de definitely gives me a zero. So, this, this is going to keep repeating until I find the number that goes into both of the given numbers. And the fact 12 goes into both 96 and 36. And it's the biggest number that goes into both. And so it's this act of repeated subtraction and then redetermining who is bigger and who is smaller that we're going to have to go through. So this technique is called the Chinese Remainder Theorem. So the first thing I have to do is figure out what is the difference. And the difference is going to be uh, uh, big minus small. And, and then, between this difference and the small, I need to figure out who is the biggest and who is the smallest. So I'm going to say that big, big is going to be equal to, to math.max for, for diff and small. And small is going to be equal to math.max diff small. So I'm going to figure out the biggest of these two numbers 
numbers, the smallest of these two numbers, and then I'm going to do it again. And I want to keep doing it as long as this remainder is not zero. Now, now as soon as this remainder is zero, we found the greatest common factor, the greatest common divisor, and it is currently held in small. So all we're going to do is return small. Now, now it's not important to know how this code works. We're actually going to talk a lot more about this type of code later on in this course. But this is going to help us find the greatest common factor. So this really is kind of black box code, which means I don't really have to know how it works. All I need to know is that it does work successfully. And that will help us find the greatest common factor. So now what I need to do to reduce is to take the numerator and denominator and divide by that common factor. And so I'm going to create a public method, but it's going to perform a task. It's not returning a value, so it's going to be a void method. I'm going to call it reduce, and the thing is, in order to reduce a fraction, I don't have to tell it any information. I just say, hey, reduce Reduce yourself, and it'll go through this process. I have to find out what the greatest common factor is, and I do that by calling on GCD for numerator and denominator. And then I want to take my, my numerator and, and divide it by the GCF, and then I want to take my denominator and divide it by the GCF. So this, this task is going to take both of those numbers numbers and divide them by whatever the greatest common factor is. So this method is going to reduce the fraction to simplest terms. And it's going to do it by dividing the numerator into denominator by the common factor. So this is my GCD method and my reduce method. And I, I forgot a semicolon somewhere, which I always tend to do. Yeah, return small semicolon. And now I'm going to go to fraction runner. I had this variable called product. And we, when we ran this, we noticed that this product, where I'm multiplying these two fractions here, multiplying 355 over 113 times 314 over 100, I end up getting this fraction here, which clearly has a multiple of 10. That's common. So I'm going to tell product to reduce itself. And then I can system 
dot out dot print line product. And if I do that, then I'm going to see product both before and after. And I've got a slight mistake here. Oh, that, that's what it is. This is supposed to be min. That would be helpful. So let's run this one more, more time. And you, you can see how it's very, very easy to make little mistakes when we're typing this stuff up. So notice that I've divided both the numerator and denominator by my common factor. And I believe 11,147. Well, it's not prime. It's going to be the product of two of these numbers. But it doesn't have any factors in common with 11,130. We've successfully reduced our fraction, and what I can do is I can take a, a, a just create a new, new fraction. So I'm going to do a fraction reducible it is equal to new, new fraction uh, uh, three hundred. 60720. Now that fraction is obviously going to reduce to one half. So if I do reducible dot reduce, that, that should reduce it. So now if I system dot out dot print line reducible, then I should see one half. And notice that it does ultimately reduce to one half. So, so this code that we have here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, paste this in the description. Uh, how, how we're actually getting this GCD. This is not really the part that you, you need to know how it works. But the idea that we could create a, a mutator that, that doesn't have, have any parameter is something that's really, really novel because all of our mutators so far has been trying, trying to find a way to, to change the contents of, of the fraction by giving us a new value to put in, into the fraction. This mutator changes the value of the fraction by, by reducing it internally. In other words, it, it's adjusting its numerator and it's adjusting its denominator internally. It, it's not given any information from the outside to do, do so. And that's what makes this pretty interesting. So, once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.